Okay, let's jump right in and write some basic blocks. Yeah, starting with some basic block syntax and style will give us a good foundation to build on. So we're using the Sublime Text Editor here, and I've got a new file open called block underscore basics dot rb. We're just gonna use this as a little scratch pad for playing around with some blocks here. So the first question is, what is a block? Well, a block is simply a chunk of code that goes between do and end. So we can put any Ruby code we want between do and end here. I'm just gonna print out echo just like that. So this is the block, but we can't run the block directly. Instead, to get this block of code to run, we need to attach or associate it with a method call. Now, Ruby has a number of methods that will take blocks and run them. The method we're gonna use is the times method, and we call it on a number. I'm gonna call it on the number three, three times, that's the method name, and then we attach the block by simply putting it after the method call there. Now, to run the block inside of Sublime Text, I'm just gonna use Command B on a Mac, or you can use Control B on a PC, and we get our output down here. We see it printed echo three times, no surprise. Don't worry about this little finish thing down here. That's just Sublime Text telling us that it finished running the code. So when the times method runs, it turns around and runs the code in the block three times in this case. The block kind of looks like a parameter to the method. Well, it does look like a parameter, but it's actually not a method parameter. And we can make that more explicit after the times method, we can use parentheses where we would normally put method parameters inside of those parentheses. And we see that the block actually comes after those parentheses. So it's not a parameter to the method. In fact, if we run this, we get exactly the same thing. So instead, the block is simply associated with or attached to the method call, in this case, the times method call. Now, don't worry about this. We're gonna explore this throughout the entire course. Yeah, and we'll see a case where the method actually takes a parameter in just a minute. So the convention is to use this do and in style when you have a multi-line block. Now, we've just got a single line block here. We've just got a single line of Ruby code inside of this block. When you have a single line block like this, instead of using do and end, you can use curly braces. I'm just gonna bring this line of code back over here, put it on the same line, get rid of the end, and just use curly braces to surround the block. So here we've got our method call, and then here's the block after the method call, just like we did with do and end, this time it's just on a single line. If we run this, we get the same thing. So let's look at blocks in a different scenario. Let's say we have a really simple order class like this one. An order has a customer's email and total amount, which we initialize, and then we wrote our own 2S method, which just prints that out that information. The first thing we want to do is create five example orders and put them in an array. And we can use the times method to do that fairly quickly. Sure, we'll just do it right down here. I'm just gonna add a little bit of space to give us a little bit of room. You wanna put them into an array, so let's start with an empty Ruby array, just like that. We'll just call it orders. Let's do five orders. Okay, so instead of using three times, we're gonna use five times, and then we're gonna give it a block. Block begins with do, ends with end, and inside of there, we can put any Ruby code we want. In this case, we wanna create an order and append it to this orders array. So we're gonna take the orders array, use the append operator like that, and then create a new order. I have to pass in the customer's email, which I'll just use customer at example.com, and then we'll give the order total of, say, $10. Then down below here, we wanna print out these orders, and I'm just gonna use put s on orders. If you call put s on an array, it just turns around, it loops through that array for you, and then it gets the string returned by 2s, which we have one of those, and then it will go ahead and print that out. So if we save that and run it, we see that we have five orders. They have the same customer's email and total. You know what we'd like instead? We'd like each order to be kind of unique, maybe have a unique email and a unique total amount. Sure, let's just return to our block basics file here and see how we can change that around. So I'm gonna start by changing this back around to do and end. It's gonna make it a little easier to demonstrate, like that. Now it turns out that the times method will pass the iteration number to the block, and we can pick that up in what's called a block parameter. And we put block parameters after do, and they go inside of vertical bars. So I'm gonna call the parameter number. It's just a variable, so we can call it whatever we want, but I'll call it number here. Then inside of the block, we can reference that variable number to print out the number of the iteration as this block is run. Go ahead and run that. And we see that the times method starts with zero and counts zero, one, and two. So each time it calls the block, it passes the number in that block parameter called number, and then we just print it out. So just to demonstrate that that's a variable, we can actually change number to just n. 
Sure. In fact, with really short blocks like this, it's very common just to use single letter uh, block parameters. So as long as we call it in as a block parameter there and reference it with the same name, it works just the same. Now I'll change it back to the single line form and we'll just take the do. That'll be a brace there. We'll move this back up to that line. And we'll get rid of end, put our curly brace there. So you see that the block parameter just goes inside of the block to the right hand side of this opening curly brace. So we've got our method call here and we've got our block here. All right, so let's go back to our orders and we can now apply this to creating our orders to have unique emails and totals. Sure, I'll just jump back over to our order.rb file and down where we're creating the orders with our times method, we know that it's gonna give us the number of the order. In fact, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use in just like we did before. So there's our block parameter. Now when we're creating the customer or the order in this case with the customer's email, I'll just interpolate that number there. That way we'll get like customer one, two, three, and so on. And in fact, we'll change the totals too. I'll take that number, whatever it is, and we'll just multiply it by 10. So we save that and run it. We see we now have different customer emails. They start with zero and go all the way up to four, and then total starting with zero going up to 40. So our orders are all different now. They're zero through 40, but it would be better if they were like 10 through 50 and customers one through five. You don't really want to be customer zero. So maybe we could change that. Yeah, the times method's not going to work in this case, so we're going to need to use another method. So let's go back to our scratch pad and play around with it. So the times method won't work for us because it starts counting at zero, but there's another method we can use, the up to method. So we want to start with one and we want to go up to a different number. In this case, we want to go one through three. So one up to three. Now notice that three is a method parameter. It's in parentheses here. It's part of this method call. The block comes after the method call, which includes the parameter. So there's the method call and there's the block. It's just important to remember that the parentheses go before the block, which is all the way on the right hand side. In other words, the code block is not a method parameter. So if we go ahead and run this, well, we see that we iterate from one to three, which is just what we want. All right, so now we know how to go back to our orders and create orders one through five. Sure, we'll jump over there. Instead of using the times method here, we're just gonna change this from one, we're gonna go up to five in this case. We've already got the block parameter. The block itself doesn't change at all. It's just like when we were using the times method, but we know that the up to method is gonna give us the numbers sequentially as we want. If we run that, we get customer one through customer five, and now our totals go from 10 to 50. Perfect. So, so far we've seen three forms of blocks. We started with a method call, in this case, the times method on a number. Blocks cannot be run on their own. They must be associated with a method. Do marks the start of the block and in marks, well, the end. Inside the block, we can put any Ruby code we want. Here, the times method calls the block three times, each time printing out echo. For simple blocks like this, we saw how we can put them all on one line. When we do that, instead of do and end, we use curly braces. We also looked at how blocks can take parameters. A block parameter is simply a local variable that sits between two vertical bars, which some people call pipes or goalposts. When the block is called, the value of the parameter is filled in by the method. In the case of the times method, each time it calls the block, it passes the block the current iteration number, zero through two, which then gets assigned to the number parameter. We then use the number parameter in the block to print the number. So you can think of a block as being like an anonymous method. It encapsulates a chunk of code and can take parameters. We can also write this block on one line again, using curly braces in place of do and end. Finally, we called a method that itself takes a parameter. In this case, we called up to and passed it four as the limit, which is the method parameter. Then comes the associated block after the method parameters. The block parameter stays the same as with time since up to also passes the current iteration number to the block. So we get four echoes. Again, we could write this block on a single line. Just make sure the do and end or curly braces come after the parentheses for the method parameters because remember, the associated code block is not a method parameter. You'll frequently see single line blocks simplified further by using a single character as the name of the block parameter. Remember, the name is arbitrary, so we can replace number with n, and that gives us an elegant line of code. So now it's your turn to write some basic blocks in the exercise. 
And in the next module, we'll use blocks with another built-in iterator method called each. Now you'll see each used all over the place in Ruby and Rails code. So come on back.